Hi, today I will show you my my Ford cylindrical grinder I bought 10 years ago. That's how she looked like when I bought her and well you may be astonished how she looks now. Let me show you some pictures and how I realized what pile of rust she was. She didn't look too terrible but it turned out like a nightmare. Anyhow, looks like uh, the pre-owner never cleaned her and uh, there was grinding dust everywhere. She was completely neglected. The pre-owner was a, honestly, he was a jerk. Handles were broken and what not. For example, this, uh, I think you call it slow blow fuse, just shows the pre-owner's attitude uh, to his machinery. The electrical cabinet completely covered in dust. Here are some pictures I took during cleaning and uh, painting and I think uh, those pictures are quite promising. But back to the future, let me introduce you the Myford MG12M cylindrical grinder. Now this is how she looks today. That's the steam block uh, used in the barrier. Here's the hand wheel for feeding in and out the uh, grinding wheel. Here's the traversal hand wheel. It can be switched in speed. I'm always using the slower speed, so I'm having a bit of problems finding the right combination. There are two levers which have to be uh, manipulated, so uh, yeah, pardon me for not knowing it immediately. Here's a stop, uh, left and right stop. There's a plunger that you can retract so you don't run against the stops. Uh, on the left side, I have uh, changed to a Mitutoyo micrometer screw uh, that's much more precise than the old rusty crap that can be seen on the right. Next, uh, here's the, I think you well, we call it zero stop. Anyhow, there's a stop that you can pull out, so the hand wheel can't be uh, moved anymore. And uh, you have a fine scale, uh, which divide one hundredth of a millimeter into one micrometer. I don't use it that often because, well, one micrometer can be done in other ways. Uh, you, I don't need that fine adjustment. Now here's the tailstock, you already guessed it. You can it retract it with the lever. Here's the adjustment for the center pressure. On top of the tailstock there's a bore for the dressing diamond. This place isn't too convenient and there is another option you will see later. Now to the work hat. One of the usual drive dogs and you see that uh, hex pin sticking out uh, for driving the drive dog. Now to the rear for the drawbar for the dead center. You know that uh, cylindrical grinders usually do work with dead centers, not life centers. That's because dead centers don't wobble around. They stay steady and so they don't move. The interesting thing here is that you can couple the outer drive blade that drives the drive dog and the dead center, so the dead center becomes life center. And to accomplish this, there is a switch that you will see. 
that stops the dead center or frees the dead center so you can couple the dead center to the drive disk. That's the switch I was talking about. Now to the boilerplate. This is for switching on and off the work head, wheel head on and off, and warning hot steam don't touch. ID and OD grinding that reverses the work head's direction, speed selector, and coolant pump. Now for something really astonishing, the electrical installation. This is extremely tidy and I think the engineer who designed it left Lucas before it was too late. I just had to add a safety door switch and that's it. Wonderful! As the fuses were hard to get, I added a fuse box and color-coded oilers. More about the air regulator later. Here's a look at her arse, uh, at her back, I'm sorry. This weight is for pulling back the wheel head to eliminate backlash. It was missing and I had to make my own. Here's the coolant tank and the coolant pool where the grinding dust uh, settles down. The pool is made of two compartments and between the two compartments I added a stripe of magnets that collects most of the grinding dust. Here's the drawer with grinding discs. Yes, I know the adapters are rusty and I'll electroplate them with nickel soon, next year, maybe. I'll come back to the adapters in a moment. These wheels cost about 80 to 100 euros, but sometimes you get a bargain with 10 euros or even better with 5 euros. <laughs> now to the wheel adapters. I think the MyFord came only with two of them and that's certainly not enough. So I had to make a bunch uh, by myself. This is one of the nuts and well you need a balancing weight uh, or two of them there and I thought how could I improve that clamping of the weights. It's always... I never like any of the systems. So I thought about it and I came to the following solution. The circular groove that you see on the outside diameter it's slightly tapered so the weight doesn't slip out by itself. The two outer bores of each segment are bored for magnets to be glued in. So if you use uh, good quality magnets that weight will never ever fall out and it will not slip by itself. The center bore is a M4 so you can screw in a screw and uh, lift out the weight. You don't get it out uh, any other way. Wait! Did I say M4? Never say 4 mm thread or whatever. It's M4. M4 defines the outer diameter, the pitch, the tolerances, everything. You don't say 4 mm thread or even worse, you write 4 mega mega. That's utter nonsense. It's M4. Nothing else. Stay with your fractional letter system if you want, but 
don't vandalize the metric system. Thank you. And a friend. I also made two collet holders, one year 25 and one year 32, I think. I did grind them on the MyFord itself, so everything is running nice and concentric. Here's the arbor for the wheel balancer and some dead straight cylinders for aligning the table. A magnetic chuck and a set three jaw chuck. This wheel driving <laughs> contraption came with the my third jerk. And the radius stressor. The stop is for setting the diameter. There are also two stops on each side, one for about 90 degrees, the other one for zero degrees. On we go with the tangential dresser. Here goes the diamond. And with the lever you do the in-out feed. This dresser is needed if you want to make a camphor, as you neither can't swivel the wheel head nor the work head. Oh, and these are the original bellows. I repaired them all with Loctite for O-rings that worked really great. Now for a gem hidden in the back of the drawer. Drum roll. It's... It's a bird. It's a plane. No. It's a compressed air spindle with, what's that? With axial in out feet. Oh. Now that looks cute, doesn't it? It must have cost a fortune. No, it didn't. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can adjust the treble, the axial treble. One of the purposes is regrinding the taper in mills or whatever. You can clamp it to the table and then regrind the taper in a, a mill. But by chance, it also fits into a multifix holder and then you can use it in the lathe to grind uh, precision tapers uh, or whatever you want. It fits in the cylindrical grinder, it fits on the table of a mill or it fits in the lathe. The idea of attaching it to a Wohlhaupter is a bit too funny, I think. Now the huge drive wheel for the flat belt I once made for the uh, mechanical ID grinder uh, has lost its purpose. I think I'll use it as a lazy Susan or something like this. One of the parts I made on the grinder was changing the MT4 to MT3, I think it was. This was a bit tricky. The alignment was a bit tricky. To get it that aligned, I used a pin that was slightly eccentric on the left side. So by rotating and adjusting the treble on the Wohlhaupter, I got the alignment perfect. 
as revenge for all the filthy work, I got a pair of hand-knitted socks that fell apart after two weeks. And a plunger for a beer scraper, so this was okay. Now I really have to attach one of those instruments so I can make live measurements while grinding. Do you think the analog or the digital one? No, the analog fits better. <laughs> 